Hey everybody, Dave here, and on the opposite side of the screen from me, which is not the way I'm pointing, because I'm using the wrong hand, on the opposite side of the screen from me is Greg. How's, how are you doing tonight? Ah, a little wet, uh, it's been a little rainy today uh, over here, although uh, I'll take that over the snow, uh, but otherwise good. How about you? Snow? What's that? That's oh, have you? We had snow and crit like right around in the, in the uh, like just before, just after we took the break from recording and whatnot. You know, a little bit of snow Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, so the 24th, 25th, 26th. And I've been able to go outside in t shirts. Yet, if you follow John David Cole's Instagram, Mississippi got snow. I live in the Bermuda Triangle of Canada. That's what I think. There was a uh... At some point, uh, a year or two ago, one of my professors from undergrad, he was, he was living in Boston, and he was kind of showing the temperatures from around the country. And uh, this was when it was like, I think it might have been during the polar vortex that uh, we had in this area here. But uh, over in uh, Boston, it was like 50 degrees. Meanwhile, we're like, not able to go to work because it's like minus 20. <laughs> yeah, go figure. But still at night, it gets chilly enough that even with a little personal heater, I heat my little office space here, and the window open, it uh, still requires a thicker hoodie. Yeah. But still. Oh yeah, like, not enough snow. But as for the rest of it, I've been doing okay. Um, for you guys listening right now, you may not and will probably not be aware unless you happen to be from the This Pipe Life group. I might have mentioned it there. My grandma's in the hospital. She fell and broke her hip literally on Christmas Eve day. In the eye doctor's office, getting a shot in the eye, fell and broke her hip. Uh, last I heard, still in the hospital, rehabbing, but other than that, okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Complaining about the food. We all know what hospital food tastes like. Yes. Absolutely. On thankfully, another uh, note. Uh, uh, thankfully, my grandma, uh, she's been, she's had a couple of weeks in the hospital, but she just came home last week because of, cause of COVID, but she... Uh, she managed to get through it, thankfully. So, uh, I, if I remember correctly, too, I think our, our grandparents might be around kind of like the same. Our, our grandmothers might be around the same age. Yeah, Grandma Allen just turned 96. I think that's around where, where my grandma is as well. 95, 96, one of the two. Yeah, so they're pretty close. Yeah. But on another note, just found out this morning that, uh, well, not really my uncle per se. I guess it is. I, the, once you get into second, like, generations, you know, it, it's hard to tell. But uh, my uncle on my, my grandma's side, her brother-in-law, passed away this morning. I don't know of what. But he'd been having some issues and was in the hospital. And I know it wasn't COVID because... We would have certainly been informed of that because family members had been visiting and whatnot. And so there would have been some information coming. But, uh, yeah, so uh, right literally the day after. No, not the day after. Today is the first day of, a no, of the stay-at-home order locking the province down. So literally the day of the lockdown. It's like you said, that's it. I'm not staying anymore. This is enough. But it's it's sad for his kids and his grandkids and whatnot. I'll be honest, I was never really close with him. So I sympathize, but it really doesn't affect me that much. I'll uh, probably stream like they're gonna stream live stream the funeral. I'll probably do that on Saturday. But beyond that, there's not really much I can do with the stay at home order. Yeah. No, it's uh, frustrating to have to deal with that. I, I did a wedding uh, about in the late October, 
and uh, thankfully things weren't shutting down at that point just yet uh, again, but uh, it, it was odd going to a, a wedding that was mainly live streamed. Mm, yeah, that would be interesting. But yeah, that pretty much takes care of all the real changes. Got some cool, cool stuff from Christmas for Christmas. Uh, this pipe is one of them. Smoking a uh, nice German Meerschaum with uh, some Best Brown Flake in it. This is the neatest feature right here. It's the Vulcanite stem into an aluminum band. Like your traditional er, uh, clay pipe, it does not come apart, but will pass pipe cleaner quite nicely. Looks nice. Oh, this is the one the kids picked out for me for Christmas. What are you smoking tonight, Greg? Tonight I am smoking uh, Seattle Pipe Club's uh, Galloping Gertie, which was uh, one that I wasn't really familiar with until I was uh, looking to put stuff on my uh, This Pipe Life uh, Secret Santa list. I thought it sounded interesting. It was a uh, uh, kind of an untraditional vapor with a Virginia's Perique and then some uh, Cavendish and also some uh, Oriental Tur Turkish, which uh, normally I'm not a fan of, but I like everything else in it. And so I figured, eh, you know what, I'll give this shot. And uh, second time smoking it in my uh, Savinelli paneled stem billiard, and it's uh, actually pretty good. Excellent. And we have some housekeeping for for a change. It's a positive thing in regards to new subscribers and listeners and whatnot. I know there has been growth in regards to the podcast at podcast. Yeah podcast aspect of things but we've also had a couple of new subscribers on the YouTube channel so thank you very much uh, Michael Penny for subscribing to uh, the channel glad to have you aboard along with Central Coast Briars so there you are hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing and we are here all week or all month or all year depending on when you're listening <laughs> yeah, thank you for checking us out. All right. So it's been a month since we've recorded an episode. I've uh, done a second uh, addition to the uh, to vacuum hypothesis uh, where I was gone through and doing some vacuum sealing. That's there for your listening entertainment. Put that out a week or so ago. Um that's looking like it's probably going to be a temporary like you know not not a long term solution unfortunately but it would come in handy you know if you're going for a couple of days and you got a travel pouch and whatnot, and uh, happen to have a vacuum sealer you can just throw multiples of uh, tobaccos into that little pouch and take it with you that's a pretty clever way to take care of that keep it fresh we will see still got a few packets to go one thing I will say is it does dry it does dry out quicker. From what I'm finding. Mm. But it, it's one of those things, and I just learned this uh, last week actually, that uh, plastic bags that, I, that I'm using for the ceiling, they breathe, which makes sense because every time I open the drawer, I'm storing those packets in. It's coming out, and it's, I'm getting the nice English smell. So I, I don't mind, but it makes sense that it wouldn't uh, be a long-term solution. Okay, I just remembered or just realized I forgot to do something, so we'll do it now. So I'm going to have to go and fill that first like 10 minutes in with some music or something, but it'll be all right. Yeah. It wasn't too long. At least it wasn't uh, filming the entire episode and then getting to that and realizing it. Oh, yeah. That, well, that would have been just a matter of 
figuring out a way to download the music that I'm using tonight and starting it from the beginning. I'll just probably do that, you know, download a couple of tracks from one of the other albums this guy does and uh, stick them on the front because they're only about a minute or so long a piece, two minutes, three minutes, somewhere in there. I'll get it worked out. Yeah. Easy problem to fix. Easy peasy. Uh, so what have you been watching over the break since uh, TV is one of the big things we talk about here on this show? Yeah. Uh, it's been, you know, pretty laid back. We actually didn't end up watching really any uh, Christmas movies, I think. We were trying. We were going to wait for my mom to eventually come in, so that we could watch something Christmassy with her. But uh, it, I don't think it ever really happened. Uh, I know my wife wanted to watch Home Alone two uh, over uh, on Christmas Day, but uh, we we put it off. We did watch uh, one of my favorite traditions is I like to watch something uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand Christmas related. And during the original series, they had two amazing Christmas episodes, which one was uh, Cl- uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. And then the other one is uh, Santa Claus, which is a Mexican film that uh, is uh, very interesting. It has a uh, yeah, it has Santa. It has it's where Santa takes on Satan. So that makes it a very, uh, very entertaining film. But uh, this year I actually decided instead to do uh, watch some riff tracks on Amazon Prime. And they had a collection of shorts that they did for Christmas. A lot of them were uh, Christmas related, although there was one that they did that was pork related for like a dinner party which uh, uh, for that one they actually had uh, a guest riffer with them and that was Weird Al ah uh, yes he'd be perfect for that something like that yeah no in which he, he came out and he and he was like why did you guys invite me to do this one I'm a vegetarian I don't even I don't understand why you would pick me to, to riff on, uh, on something with a uh, work involved but, oh uh, i don't know it might be a little uh little number called spam that might have something to do with it <laughs> well, or my bologna yeah one of those two that'd probably be, yeah. be a good uh, good indicator but uh no i mean that one that one was actually like a a pretty painful well that one was wasn't like one of my favorite ones, but I think they did a pretty good job uh, riff, riffing that one. Uh, it, it was enjoyable, but what uh, the real highlight was on Christmas night, my wife and I. But no, was it Christmas night? It might have been Christmas night. It, it was either that or the next day. We ended up watching uh, Riff Tracks Sharknado. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the next night we watched Sharknado two, and uh, they they managed to do both of these live. And I, I really hope they decide to one day do the other Sharknado movies because we, my wife and I, ended up becoming Sharknado fans just because of how utterly ridiculous <laughs> the, the the movie the movies were. As it's it's like. Uh, of, and I, you know it's appropriate too that we watched the first one around Christmas because one of the main characters who actually uh, he's not in the film for too too long but he does get a, a pretty sizable role is actually the dad from of the Home Alone movies he uh, he plays uh, one of the main characters nice and uh, yeah I was just like oh it, that's him and uh yeah, like this was our, our first time ever watching it. We were actually going to start with uh, Sharknado 2 first because that one was the one that was available on Amazon. I actually ended up buying the first one to watch. Uh, 
but uh, within like the first couple of minutes, my wife was said, "Oh, just get the first one, so we're not lost on anything." So, you know, she was very terrified that we would miss out on any sort of uh, Sharknado lore that uh, might pass on from the two films. But it like. They, they didn't really appeal to me like when they first were like showing up on TV and, and were like big events because I like I'm not much of like a gore fan and uh, I've just didn't know like how like bloody it would get like I knew it was over the top because of, you know of course it's a tor- tornado full of sharks but uh, I, even with me like as someone that uh, just doesn't like gore like the whole thing was just like barely like the whole thing is just ridiculous from beginning to end so I don't think anyone would be traumatized by the the deaths that they witness because it's just you know and usually people just seem to like I think they just basically got eaten whole so you know there's no you know real nothing bad with that but uh, like as a fan of movies that are cheesy and purposely bad this one more than lived up to the hype and uh i'm really glad that i watched both sharknado movies to the point where i I might just end up watching some of the other ones just for fun even without the rip tracks yeah yeah it sounds like it might be it might be interesting i'm not a big uh big on on the sharknado movies either but uh i can't say that really with any certainty since i've never actually watched them but like you, I'm not a big gore fan, and I'm sure Al is not happy about that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I think Al will uh, get over that eventually. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what he th- what I think <laughs> as far as he goes. I don't even live in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think he's doing pretty good with his, uh, you know, with everything. But. Uh, no, like I, I love bad movies. Like one of my favorite bad movies is a uh, Birdemic, that, that Rift and Rift Tracks did that one as well. And it's just, if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever seen any of uh, of that movie, but it's like people. It's supposed to be like the birds, but it's with like these awful like, um, almost they're almost like gifs of birds just like flying around in place and going after people, and it's uh, like. I remember in undergrad, well, in um, showing it to one of my friends in grad school, and I showed him the trailer for it first. And watching his eyes the first time he saw the birds appear, and it was just like, no, no, that can't be a real movie. It's like, oh, but it is. It is a real movie, and a real ninety-minute movie, and we're going to watch it right now. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, so Christmas kind of rekindled my love for for riff tracks, which I, I you know I always love, but you know some with some things you kind of just go through phases where you kind of sure you know forget about things for a bit. Oh, absolutely. Besides that, I uh, um, did I talk about Ducktales last time? Mm. Sorry, everybody, that went down the wrong way. I got nothing to drink. Oh, oh no. I don't remember if you actually uh, mm. talked about DuckTales or not. Okay, I'll take over if you want to run and get something. Okay, so DuckTales. So, you know, growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, you know, most kids watched DuckTales. It's just uh, one of those classic children's shows that uh, is just fondly remembered. And it was fondly remembered by me. And the funny thing is, uh, really, the only episode I... I, And it wasn't even an episode. The main thing that just I I remember from the whole show was the the movie with the genie that they did. But, uh, But still, like, you know, iconic theme tune and everything... So, one of the perks to, to picking up Disney Plus to watch The Mandalorian 
was that we could, and my wife and I could watch the new DuckTales show. And we had been, I had been kind of wanting to watch it for a while ever since they announced like the voice cast for uh, DuckTales. Uh, you know, Scrooge McDuck is voiced by David Tennant from Doctor Who fame. And that alone was enough to get my wife on board. But, you know, I, like that was when I was watching Doctor Who uh, when, when he was a doctor. So I was excited for that. Besides Scrooge, uh, the three nephews are all voiced by different people this time instead of ca- kind of having the same voice and similar personality. Uh, with Danny Pudi from Community doing Huey. I'm blanking on the middle brother's name, uh, on uh, Dewey's voice actor's name, but he was in uh, Parks and Recreation as John Alfio. And uh, the last one is, uh, I think it's Michael Sudeikis. No, that's Jason Sudeikis. It's uh, Michael, I'm blanking on his name as well, but he was on Saturday Night Live. I'm really familiar with his work, but uh, he, he does the voice of Louie. But I'm I'm very much a fan of this show. It's very apparent that they like, uh, like everyone involved liked at least liked the original Ducktales, and I feel like they do a, a very good job taking the original show and giving it a an updated coat of paint and lately like i haven't been really all that excited about reboots or uh remakes of things like animaniacs just recently came out with like a short season and honestly i don't know if i'll check that out even though i was a big animaniacs fan there's some things where it's just better to kind of let them be for how they were uh, but with DuckTales, they actually found a way to improve the formula, give each of the nephews like their own really distinct personalities. And and the art style, you know, the art style is just uh, really nice as well. Like it's simple, but it's very stylish. And... You know, like, it, I think probably quality, like the 80s one, based on its time period, is probably better. But, uh, like, I just, I, I like the art for the current reboot. It, it's just very nice and appealing. And, you know, sometimes you can, there's little nitpicks I can have with the show here or there. Like, I sometimes I feel like they make Launchpad a little too stupid, unrealistically. Um, but a lot of the problems that I had with the show, I, I feel that they've kind of ironed out over time. And like, like my wife and I are in the middle of the second season right now. And just seeing all the little nods to classic, um, Disney properties, like, there's one episode that had the three Calaberos uh, guest appearing in it. Uh, another one. Uh, and another thing, too, is they seem to really love like the original DuckTales comic source material. And, and, and so that's all very apparent in the show. And it, really, it just... It's the best love letter to an original property that I've seen. And I, like, I, I completely recommend it to anyone that has Disney Plus to check it out. Or if you were, you know, grew up in the 80s or 90s and, and loved the show, it's a, a worthy, very worthy successor. And I'm very sad that uh, the next season, season three, is going to be the last one. And uh, I think it's a shame that. Disney canceled it because I feel like, and granted, I'm sure the voice cast isn't the cheapest, but uh, I know it's the most interested I've been in a Disney show, in a, you know, not counting stuff like Star Wars or 
anything like that. Uh, really, for, probably since the, the Disney afternoon days, probably Goof Troop. That was probably the last one I was really into. But uh, again, highly recommended. How about you, Dave? What have you been watching? Well, there's been a lot of Paw Patrol and a lot of Jake and the Neverland Pirates and a lot of other things that I just try to ignore because they're all like aimed at seven and under. So needless to say, when I'm not doing stuff like down here on the computer, like doing this or, you know, playing in the Minecraft world or playing in Sea of Thieves, which those three things pretty much cover my <laughs> my pastimes when I'm not doing housework and stuff. Um, let's see. Over the break, uh, Christmas-wise, we managed to watch a couple of Christmas movies um, on Netflix. We watched... Um, oh, no, I can't remember the title... Kurt Russell plays Santa Claus in it. Kids movie or adult movie? Bit of both. It's one of those movies, you know, that the humor is there for the adults as, lo oh, as well as the kids. Basically, the, okay. the first one is the, the classic, Hey, I know, we're home on Christmas Eve while our mom's working. Let's try and set a trap for Santa Claus and catch him. Hmm. Um, and the second one focuses on uh, a different type of story but regardless oh, the Christmas Chronicles that's what, what it is one and two so those are fun definitely recommended if uh, you're looking for some interesting Christmas movies and seeing Kurt Russell in a role you never would have thought you'd see Kurt Russell in Goldie Hawn is Mrs. Claus. But beyond that, um, I've been starting to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer again. I forget where I found it, but uh, I'm about halfway through season one again. So it, it's been fun. Just saw a really young David Boreanaz. I'll tell you, there's a guy who has been working since the 90s. Because he went from Buffy to Angel, from Angel to Bones, from Bones to SWAT. He started working back in Buffy, and he hasn't been without a show to a show to be on since then. Yeah, they've all been long-running shows. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. He was, on, he was on Buffy till about season three when they split him off and did Angel. And then that ran for another four or five years after that. And Bones was 12 seasons. And SWAT's still going. Yeah, it doesn't feel all that long ago that Bones went off, but I, I guess it has. Well, it's been a bit, three or four years at least. If I knew what season SWAT was in, I'd, I'd let you know. I'm not following that one. Yeah, I know. I used to used to be a big fan of Bones, and then just kind of trailed off. Yeah, we were like that too. We uh, we we were watching it almost religiously, and then we got into that stupid thing with the nemesis, the hacker. Yeah, the hacker dude, him, and the whole thing that led to Zach, you know, being a villain and bad guy in the show and all that stuff. Then we watched season 12 just because, well, it was the last season, so we just jumped in there and whatever we didn't understand from previous, we just ignored. Enjoyed it well enough. Yeah. Because it was a short season and, well, we'll watch the last one. I love the, I like the assistants that uh, would, would rotate around. Oh, my favorite was the redheaded one uh, girl they had coming in every once in a while, um, because she played a, a, a quirky assistant here on Bones. But then on Big Bang Theory, she was also playing Raj Kuthrapali's girlfriend at the same time. Hmm. 
Because I'd see her on both shows during the same season. Yeah, I didn't realize she was on that show. Well, it was fascinating to watch her on two different shows airing at the same time because you could see her versatility as an actor. Like She's playing a Big Bang character and she's a strange character there. And while she was, you know, an eccentric character on Bones, she was more grounded, more normal. It was, it was amazing to watch. I wish I could remember her name. Yeah. My favorite was, uh, the guy that was kind of taller, uh, that was always like depressed. Mm. Even though I didn't see it, I believe he was also in the Avatar movie. And then they did an episode where he and uh, the bug guy were going to go see the movie Avatar. <laughs> that would have been amusing. Hodgins. There we yeah, go. Yeah, Hodgins. But yeah, aside from... Uh... Aside from watching Buffy through again, I'm starting to watch Buffy through again. I'm basically spending the rest of my time on YouTube. I got some sh YouTube shows that I follow, and uh, when they come out with episodes, I watch them because they're short. Yeah, you, know, you know, like at the most 20 minutes. Mm hmm. So I think once we're done here, before I go to bed, that's what I'll be doing is uh, catching up on a couple of couple of episodes that just came out yeah I, uh, I I've been watching a lot of YouTube as of late it's mainly been like uh, one of my favorite things to do is just look up like a, an old game series and see if I can find uh, any retrospectives on it or deep dives into it not not necessarily a let's play, but more of just kind of like, I, I'm more about learning about the information about it. And so I've been doing that with a game series called uh, Fire Emblem as of late. Yeah, my YouTube fair, when it's not uh, something similar to that, like watching game theory or film theory or the Super Carolyn Brothers, I'm watching uh, Minecraft videos since I just started playing Minecraft, you know, looking for ideas things to do, things to build. That's cool. Over the break, I picked up uh, the latest uh, character pack for Smash Brothers, which includes uh, the main characters uh, from Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft Steve? Mm-hmm. Found him a little bit tricky to control, but uh, I... I appreciate that he's there. Yeah, I've never been... I've had a couple of consoles later in life, but I've always been a PC player, so... I've never actually gotten to do the Smash Brothers thing. Yeah, it might be fun just to kind of watch a couple of videos and, and see all the stuff they did for him. Because Nintendo is pretty good about... Uh, giving a lot of love to the guest characters that appear in, in that game. Mm-hmm. Well. I know we need to finish off Mandalorian Season 1. I think we have to do just the last two episodes before we can move on on that. Mm-hmm. Seven and eight. Yep, and then can move on to season two. Also, if anybody's interested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that's been going on, one of their new TV shows is starting up. Let's see, recording time tomorrow on the 15th of January. WandaVision is uh, starting out. So, of course, I will be checking that out. It looks like it's going to be interesting. I think just going by the trailers, so I'm, I'm going into some speculation mode here. 
Uh, but going by the trailers I've been seeing on Disney Plus when uh, I'm looking for something else, it's uh, looking like it might be the fallout from Want for Wanda um, after Vision dies in Infinity War or is it Endgame? Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking what we're seeing in this is the psychological fallout from that. I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're correct on that. Especially if uh, it's uh, you, you take it the, the name liter literally of a uh, Wanda vision. It's uh, Wanda's vision. Yeah, because if, if you go to Disney Plus and you look at the trailer for it, you see them flashing between different uh, versions of what, of what looks to be a home life. So that's why I think it's like the psychological fallout. It's her. What would have happening if type deal through different genres of TV and whatnot, black and white. It looks like it could, it could be interesting. And it could fall flat. It's one of those. Yeah, it's definitely different from anything else that I've seen uh, the Marvel Universe do. If I'm not mistaken, this is their f their, their first uh, episodic show going in for the Disney yeah. uh, lineup. Because I know they got one planned with Loki and they got WandaVision. And there's a few other ones I think they've got planned that are in the MCU. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, that's the other one I was thinking of. I don't know when those are hitting. And I believe they're doing a what if show. Oh yeah, what if. Yeah. But if the success of Disney's Mandalorian series is any indicator they will probably be successful with uh, what they're doing too as long as they can keep everything within universe and making sense yeah I wonder how that all will go especially because I think this uh, next uh, uh, this phase four I think it's going to have some trouble and not even I think even if we weren't, weren't dealing with all this stuff with the pandemic and whatnot with uh, theaters and everything I still think they would have faced some trouble yeah you, you can't really do like they keep building they've kept building on like from Iron Man all the way through the 22 23 movies that are involved in the universe so far you can't just keep building on that note doing yourself all the time you're gonna you're gonna get to a point where it's just inevitable you're gonna get to a point where it's gonna it's gonna come crashing down not right. that I don't enjoy the movies that have come already I'm a big fan and I'm hoping it takes years before this happens and that they can get the arcs out before uh, things start uh, coming apart at the seams but I think it's inevitable just like yeah, Thanos no, was supposed to be. Yeah. My hope is that, you know, like I definitely foresee uh, an end to, or maybe what I can see is more of like a shifting from like a cinematic universe to just something that they can keep building on and just keep kind of doing stuff with not necessarily have a an end per se but I mean I, I think certainly what they did in the 2010s will be considered to be kind of like the golden age of superhero films mm -hmm. 
but and I, I do I do think superhero films are kind of here to stay. Oh, definitely. But uh, I, I just don't know if they'll ever have the peak that they had in uh, <clears throat> in their prime. Oh, for sure. But I, I do think what they're doing with the this the syndicated style show like WandaVision, Loki, um, Winter Soldier, and Falcon. I think those things will, if they can do it right, will be a, will be an area, if not the area, they can continue to build on. Yeah, and I think in retrospect, that might have been one of the smartest things that they've done considering everything that's going on right now. Okay. On that note, <clears throat> I think we should call it here. We're getting on to the hour mark, so this has been one of the longer shows we've done. I think we just had, I mean, you know. We had a month, month though. <laughs> well, that and, you know, we had to also talk about the very important, uh, uh, the very important discussion on uh, Sharknado. Oh, yes. But anyway. We shall end it here, and of course, if you want to follow us throughout the week, um, I'm sure there are still Twitter handles out there, but I recently just changed my online handle by one letter, so I'm now Dr. Alien 201 instead of Alan, Dr. Alan 201, um, and you can use that on Twitter, and I have changed it on Instagram. I'm still going through. You'll never find me on Facebook. I left that behind uh, last month. I just saw recently that you did the same thing. Um, Greg, you're on Instagram as well, I believe. And you have your blog. Yes. Yes, uh, I'm still, uh, well, I'm still on Twitter. Uh, the underscore Badger Piper. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'll be there forever, but at least for now, I'm there. Um, I'm on Instagram, and that's... Uh, just the Badger Piper. You can follow my blog at the Badger Pop, uh, the Badger Piper, <laughs> the Badger Bopper. Yes, and uh, also started a just started a blog on, on not uh, pipe smoking related, but uh, just chronicling my journey learning how to play the bagpipes on uh, uh, the Piper's Quest WordPress .com, If anyone is interested in that. Uh, besides that I, I mean I think that pretty much covers it alright and of course if you just want to give us an email it's reverse flash time at gmail.com and of course you can find us right here on YouTube and anywhere podcasts are so with that being said Greg you got anything any final thoughts for the night uh you know, I was going to say something, but uh, I think it left me. Fatherhood does that to you. Definitely. And on that note, I have nothing either. So thanks for watching, everybody, and listening. Watch some good TV over, over the week and have good smokes. Catch you later.